Okay, so before you um, start the video, you'll want to have the a hard copy of the guided notes. You can print these from Canvas if you uh, weren't uh, able to get the hard copy from me on Thursday. All right, so uh, in this video, I'm going to be looking at the ratio and proportion part of section 6-2. All right, so uh, a ratio is a comparison of quantities using division. All right, so here's a Here's an example. So in 2021, 52% of all the smartphones were iPhones and 48% were some other model. So we could do the ratio of iPhones to smart other smartphones and we could say it was 52 to 48. Order matters, so make sure 52 was first and 48 was second. There's some various, various different ways of representing a ratio. Um, so you could represent it using uh, two dots, a colon like that. You could write it 52 to 48 using the colon. And then you also can write a ratio as a fraction. You can write it as 52 over 48. And again, the order matters, so pay attention to what was first. So iPhones to smartphones. So 52 has to be in front of the colon or on top of the fraction. Okay. So um, writing a ratio of two quantities is what's happening in this first part. All right, so let's take a look at question number one. In this one, we've got a lot of different pieces of information. So um, we have information about people who participate in swimming, biking, bowling, and fishing. Okay. So we want a ratio of recreational swimmers to recreational bikers. All right, so swimmers, that was there, and biking is there, so we want, um, oops, that's the wrong one. So we want 95 million to 56.2 million. So we had 95.1 million recreational swimmers and then 56.2 million recreational bikers. All right, now when we write the ratio, we could do 95.1 million to 56.2 million, but we could uh, divide top and bottom by a million and just write 95.1 over 56.2, okay? Because you really do typically simplify these anyway. And then also you sometimes don't want those decimals in there. So sometimes you'll see that they'll multiply by 10 and write it as 951 to 562. And then if that could be simplified, you would do that as well. And it could be written that way, or these could have been written using the colon symbol or even the word to, right? You could use the colon symbol or even the word to in between it. All right, so then for people who fish to people who bowl, you just have to be sure you're putting the correct thing first. So fishing, that was the 44.5, to bowling, bowling was the 52.6, okay, or 445 to 526. Really, this is okay. Um, you'll see it that way, but oftentimes you'll see it where they just try to do it as whole numbers, okay? All right, now, since we're writing these ratios as fractions, then you simply, you typically do want to simplify them. So they can be simplified in the same way you reduce fractions, okay? So like 52 over 48, both of those are even, so I know they're both divisible by two, so I might just divide by two top and bottom, and that would be the same as 26 to 24, and then two will go into both of those, so 13 to 12, and at that point, I can't simplify any more. So that would be the ratio written in its most simplified form. Okay? And even if it's written this way, even if it's written using the two or the colon, really you ought to reduce that ratio to where you have 13 to 12. Okay? Now with 180 over 840, I notice that it ends in a zero. So the first thing I might do is divide by 10 then I might go in and notice that they're even and cut it in half. Oh, I guess I don't need to write that for you. Cut it in half, top and bottom, divide by two, 
and get the 9 over 42. And then just checking 3 goes into 9 and 3 actually will go into 42. So when I divide by 3, I wind up with the ratio of 3 to 14. Okay, And it could be written that way or that way. All right. All right, now, one tricky thing with ratios is you've got to watch it because, like, sometimes the ratios involve measurements and maybe one thing was measured in ounces and another thing was measured in pounds. And you, you have to be careful that when you write your ratios that you, the units are the same or that the units match, okay? Otherwise, the, the ratio is really meaningless. For instance, the, the, a two-foot board compared to a board that's 18 inches long, this ratio right here would be meaningless, okay? It makes it look like the two-foot board is, is smaller than a board that's 18 inches long. Problem is the units don't match. This is feet and this is inches. So you'd want to get those to be the same. So you'd either want to change everything to feet and then work on simplifying that or change both measurements into inches. So two feet is 24 inches and do 24 to 18 and then that's a more accurate comparison. All right, both of these need to be simplified. So with 24 over 18, I could divide by six and get it simplified to four to three. And the same thing could happen here, but I might first multiply by 10 to get rid of that decimal 10 top and bottom would get rid of the decimal. And then if I divide by 5, I would get that same 4 to 3 ratio at the end. So just remember that if, if measurements are involved, check to make sure those measurements have the same unit to them. Okay. All right, now what we're going to do is use these ratios to build what's called a proportion. Okay. So a proportion is really just a type of equation that comes up pretty frequently. A proportion is an equation in which two ratios are set equal to one another, like 4 sevenths equals 8 fourteenths. Okay, notice if I simplified 8 fourteenths by dividing by 2, I would get 4 sevenths. Those two fractions are actually representing the same quantity. Okay. So a lot of times when we're looking at two fractions, we can determine if those two fractions can be set equal to one another by looking to see whether a times d equals b times c. Okay. And the reason that works has to do with how equations can be solved. So if you look at that, if those two were equal, then what I could do is take the least common denominator of those two fractions, the LCD of those two fractions, would be B times D. And I could multiply the left side by that, and I could multiply the right side by that. And if I did that, then I would be, I would have just AD left on the left side, and then over here I would have BC left on the right side. Okay, so if two fractions are equal, then this must also be the case. AD must equal base BC. And notice that AD is on one diagonal and BC is on the other. The product, when you multiply the numerator of one fraction with the denominator of another one, that's called a cross product. And so we know that two ratios actually form a proportion if the cross products are the same. Okay. So 5 6 and 15 18 we could look at how 5 times 18 is 90 and how 6 times 15 is also 90 so we know 5 6 equals 15 18 okay. Alright so in this problem we're just gonna um, quickly try to determine if these two fractions are equal to one another if we really have a proportion and we'll do it using cross products. So 3 times 5 is 45 and 5 times 9 is 45. So this proportion is true. This is okay to put an equal sign between those. But here that's not the case because 2 times 5 is 10 but 7 times 3 is 21. So this is not a proportion really. 
And then here, the 8 times 4, that would be 112. And then 7 times 16. So they, the cross products are equal. So yes, this would, that would be a proportion. It would be okay to put the equal sign between them. <clears throat> now we're getting into what you really need to be able to do. That is to solve a proportion. So what will happen is sometimes you have a proportion where there's like a missing value. There's an unknown value, missing piece to the proportion. So let's look at that. Um, so on, on A, we, we want to solve this proportion means find the value of x that you would need. So a nice way to do it is to cross multiply, okay, set the cross products equal to one another. So 12 times x equals 48 times 3 which means 12x equals 144. Then solve that equation by dividing by 12, and you get that x would be 12. Okay. All right, now, I also kind of already knew that because I can work with this problem like these were fractions, and I noticed 12 divided by 3 would be, 12 divided by 4 would be 3, and then 48 divided by 4, if I divided by 4 there, that would have to be 12. So to be true, I knew x had to be 12. But this idea right here just gives you a really quick way to solve a proportion. Just set the cross products equal to one another. All right, we can do the same thing on one like this. 20 times the quantity x minus 5, that cross product would have to equal 10 times the quantity x plus 2. And then we've got a little more work to do because we have to distribute and get 20x minus 100 equals the 10x plus 20. Then we'll come in and we'll work on getting the, x, the x's to one side, the variable terms to one side. And then at that point we have that standard looking equation. So I'm going to come in here and add 100 to both sides. So that gives me 10x equals 120. And then finally, I'm going to take and divide by 10 to undo that multiplying that's there. So I get x equals 12 on this one as well. All right, so we've just solved a couple of, of um, proportions. Now we're going to look at two problems that are in context. We're going to set up a proportion and then solve it to answer a question. All right, so let's take a look. All right, so the first application, you have a situation where um, someone went 228 miles using 12 gallons of a gas. Okay, then they're refueling, so they're going to fill it up. And then they're going to need to go an additional 380 miles the SUV has a 21 gallon tank, right? So that's going to matter right there. And the question is, will they be able to make it without refueling again? Okay. So what we could do on this one is to start by taking the 12 gallons over the 228 miles and setting it equal to how many gallons it would take to go 380 miles. Okay. We could cross multiply, and when we did that, we'd get 228 times x equals 12 times 380. So we'd need to divide by the 228 on both sides to get the x that we're looking for by itself. And so when we do that, 12 times 380 over 228, we work that out, we get 20. Okay, so we would need 20 gallons to go 380 miles. So yes, they can make it. Because they filled it up, so there's 21 gallons in the tank. Okay. All right, now here's another one that's a little less intuitive. So here, um, you may have wondered how they estimate how many fish there might be in a body of water. So here's one way they do it. So we're, they're going to be estimating how many fish there are in a lake. 
So what they do, what the biologist will do is get a sample of fish and tag them. Okay, so these are going to be the tagged fish. And then they put those fish back in the lake and come back later and they, they, they get another sample. You know, they catch some more fish, this time 80 fish, and they look at how many of them were tagged. Okay. And then we can set up a, a, a proportion. So there were five tagged fish in those 80 fish that were caught. And what we can do is look at how there were 35, we tagged 35 fish, and then we want to know how many fish there were in the lake. So we solve that proportion by cross multiplying, getting 5x equals 80 times 35. Okay. So the 5x being the 2800, and then just divide by 5, and we get an estimate for how many fish were in the lake. So there were about 560 fish in the lake. Okay. So make sure you kind of do what we did on the previous one. Notice that the gallons are in the same spot and the miles are in the same spot. Here, tagged fish to tagged fish, okay, fish in all to fish in all. Okay. All right, so I'm going to stop there on this one, and then there will be another video that I'll do for variation.